What's up everyone and welcome back to yet another episode of Fire Emblem Three Houses. In the last episode, I believe we did some battles. I don't, actually, I'm, honestly, I don't remember, remember what we did last episode. <clears throat> but I do remember I was going to end it off the episode uh, grinding off screen for support and such. So that's what I did. So, so we have, I have plenty of supports just to see if I can, just to see how much time many supports I can get done before the time skip. Cause I know some of the, I know some of the supports after the time skip won't be available anymore. So I was like, I'll try I'll try to get as many supports as I can. So I, I got I just, then I just got to the point where like, you know I'm tired of grinding for I'm tired of grinding for supports. So I just stopped and, and did the did two of the quests two of the quests that we could, that we had to do um, for for the monastery one of those uh, map quests and uh, everybody's. Pretty, has leveled up. Everybody's at least in the 30s. I'm at 40, but everybody's at least at level 30 to 36, around there. Except for the ones, who, except for the ones we don't plan on using, like Manuela, Hanuman. I mean, Shamir and Kathy might be, we might use. Zero might use. Anna, no, I'm not worried about Anna. Manuela, Alois, yeah. But anyways, I do want to do the battle this episode, so we do need to get get ahead of these supports that we can do. So let's go ahead and do that. Ah, Professor. Always a pleasure to see you. I wonder, might you have a moment to chat? Uh, come now, you have no need to be on guard. I'd never cause you harm. You're far too valuable a specimen, uh, well, that is to say, too valuable a member of the Academy staff. Indeed. The further my crest research progresses, the closer you come to learning the truth of your heritage. Is it not so? When I learned you bore the lost crest, the very crest of flames itself, I set about learning everything I could about your past. What was the origin of your bloodline? How have the events of your life been shaped by your lineage? I became somewhat obsessed, I must admit. Nothing so crass as an investigation. No, I researched. I spoke to mercenaries whom you've worked with in the past to learn about your life before the Academy. Of course, I also contacted your father's old mercenary crew. Quite an interesting lot, they are. It was difficult work, since I could not speak with Gerald himself. I am quite sorry for your loss. By all accounts, your father was a good man. I'm excited to share with you what I learned, but I do ask that you correct me if I am mistaken on any account. The story begins with Gerald serving as captain of the Knights of Seros. There was a woman at the monastery with whom Gerald was quite close. At first, it seemed obvious this mystery woman was your mother. Alas, that cannot be the case. The timing is all wrong. As it was told to me, the woman in question passed away shortly before Gerald left the monastery. Yet your birth occurred sometime later, while Gerald was taking work as a mercenary. This, of course, presumes your age is accurately reported. If you were born sooner, well, the story would be quite different, would it not? Oh, I am aware. You two were certainly enigmatic, as far as mercenaries go. For example, Gerald never once spoke of his time serving as captain of the Knights. That's quite a secret to keep for all those years. In the end, your old acquaintances had little definitive to say about either of you. However, they all agreed on one thing. Your father and yourself were a strong pair. Warriors to be respected and feared. You in particular. In fact, many came to know you as the Ashen Demon. They say you would destroy your enemies without a hint of emotion on your face. The mercenaries I spoke to revered you as a living legend of sorts. So, that is what I learned. And, I admit, it is barely more than I knew before. The next step in my research is to ask your blood for answers, and hope that it is more forthcoming than your past acquaintances.
Hello, Professor. You're really on the move today. A lot to get done, I take it? I'm happy to help. Uh, tell me, is there anything I could do to lighten your load a bit? Oh, surely there must be something. Uh, don't be shy about asking for help. We're practically siblings, after all. Cut from the same cloth. I was raised by Gerald just as you were, so we should have no trouble getting along. Huh? <laughs> Did I not mention that? How thoughtless! What an embarrassing gaffe! My parents died when I was small, and I came to live in the monastery. It was an aimless existence. But sometimes, a knight would pass by, wearing magnificent armor. That knight was Geralt. And the first time he laid eyes on me, he made me his squire. What was he thinking, huh? No kidding. I don't think I'll ever fully understand his logic. Later, I heard that the squire preceding me had died of a terrible plague. I looked a bit like him and was about the same age, so... Gerald thought me a suitable replacement. A little nutty, old Gerald, there's no doubt about that. Quite a character. All that was more than 30 years ago. How time flies. That's right. I wasn't even 15 years old. Well, Gerald hardly seemed to age at all. In fact, over drinks he once told me... Uh, <laughs> perhaps that's a story for another day. At any rate, that's Gerald for you. One of a kind. I don't think there's anyone else quite like him. Right. Well, now you've heard my whole story. I hope that you understand now why I feel such a strong sense of attachment to you. If you're ever in a bind, just give me a holler. I'll help however I can. Indeed, indeed. <laughs> well, I'll uh, let you get back to it. But truly, if I can take anything off your plate, don't hesitate to let me know. Keeping it clean, sweeping it clean. No more trash, no where, no how. Oh darn, there's trash over there. Hey, Professor, the cathedral's a real important place for the Church of Saros, so I always make sure it's all sparkling clean. The monks do some cleaning too, and they tell me not to bother, and sometimes they even say to go away, but they just don't clean as good as I do. I don't stop until everything shines. Nah, not really. And Lady Rhea told me it's okay if I don't show an interest unless I feel like it. And I haven't so far, but I just want to take good care of the things she cares about. If there's a thing she wants taken care of, then I'll do it better than anyone else. What do you think? You'd go the extra mile for Lady Rhea, wouldn't you? Maybe you don't realize how great a person Lady Rhea is. She's always praying hard as she can for her followers all across Fodlin. She does it every single day. And even though she's always so busy, she tries to listen to as many people's needs as she can. When she's seen the kids who lost their parents in Remire Village, she didn't leave them there. She got the church to take those kids in, same as me. She's so kind. She's almost like a mom to all her followers, and just everybody that I can think of loves her. Hang on, are you trying to say you know more about Lady Rhea than I do? Okay, maybe she likes you more than she likes me. But I know that I know a whole lot more about her than you do. I know these things, okay? So don't go talking down to me like you know better. Huh? Well, just as long as we're all clear on that. Hi, Flame. Have the four saints caught your fancy? Hello there, Claude. No, not particularly. I was merely looking. 
I see. In any case, do you mind if I ask you a little something? It's about your family's origin. This again? <laughs> there is truly nothing of interest to discuss on that topic. Ah, but when you try to change the subject like that, it drives me mad with curiosity. That said, taking a secret by force isn't my style. That's why I devised a different approach. Relentless nagging. Might I suggest giving up entirely? Truth be told, my brother has asked that I not speak of my background to anyone. I thought it might be something like that. Oh well, guess I'd better give up on trying to get you to tell me yourself. Instead, why don't I tell you about the theory I've come up with? You've concocted a theory, have you? I suppose there is no harm in listening to it. I did a bit of investigating into the crests that you and Seteth bear. Seteth's is the major crest of Keyhole, and yours is the major crest of Sethleen. Where did you learn of this? Oh, I just took a peek at some records by a renowned crest scholar. I'd rather not say more than that. Anyway, my point is that I don't think I've ever heard of two siblings each bearing the major crests of a pair of saints. If the legends are true, then Saint Keyhole was Saint Sethleen's father, wasn't he? Which means if you and Seteth were the descendants of Saint Sethleen, that would explain how you two came to possess Keyhole and Sethleen's crests. You mean to suggest that my brother and I are the children's children's children of Sethleen? That about sums it up. <laughs> An interesting theory, to say the least. But surely you must know. Saint Sethleen was never married. There are no tales of her having ever had children. Sure, sure, but the possibilities are endless. It's not like legends are known for their accuracy. But, based on your reaction, I guess I'm probably following a bad lead here. Ha! Huh. Not bad. You're quite skilled. Shamir? What a rare treat for you to start a conversation for a change. Is it? It's not possible you came to ask for my help with something. Could it be you want to become closer friends? Don't flatter yourself. That's cruel. You could have at least hesitated a beat before answering. Last we spoke, you were questioning whether or not you belong here. You remember that, do you? Well, yes, I do think this is where I belong. For now. I have things that I want to achieve, and I can only do that by staying right where I am. That said, once I've done what I'm here to do, it's hard to say whether I'll stay or leave. I might end up searching for another place to belong. That is true for most people. Life would be tedious if we knew what lies ahead. Whether or not you belong in a place can change at any time. As soon as you settle in somewhere new, you begin to question your decision. That's true. I guess trying things out and searching for our own path is what life is about. And both of our paths have led us here. This is where we belong right now. Even if it's just a temporary coincidence, we should cherish it while it lasts. What are you going on about now? I'm just saying we should make the most of this time we have together, since we don't know how long it'll last. Once it's gone, it might never come back. Right? Is this your sad attempt at flirting? <laughs> I will admit, you're an interesting one. Picking wildflowers? Seems such a common activity for someone like you. To me, the most beautiful flower is the one that blossoms by its own strength. Lysithia, please accept this as... Knock it off! Uh, sorry. It's just that the thorns are a bit sharp, and I'm not a fan of killing nature. True sympathy, even for the smallest wildflower. I admire your kindness. When you inherit your house, that kindness will be a balm to your subjects. They and the neighboring lords will trust you instinctively. Politics. Again. The Alliance has been harmed in the past by lords who thought only of themselves. 
who saw others as a means to an end. But you, you understand others' pain. With you around, I am quite hopeful that the Alliance will flourish again. That's not something you should get your hopes up about. House Ordelia will end with my father. I'm sorry? I understand you have a distaste for politics, but could you really allow a noble house three centuries old to fall to ruin? This goes beyond you and even your house. What would become of Fodlin if all its noble houses withered away in such a manner? The people would be in disarray. The balance of power would crumble. Chaos would rule. No, it's just... My body, unfortunately, is not built to last. And I have no siblings. When I die, that's the end. What? Noble birth has been nothing but a source of pain for me. For me, and for my parents. We got sucked into the rebellion in the Empire, and it led to... many responsibilities for us. The things we went through. I can hardly bear to speak of it. All I want now is to give my mother and father the chance to live out their years in peace. I intend to do whatever I can to ease the hardships of our people, while I still have life left in me. Naturally, I worry about what will come to pass after I'm gone. But I'm sure things will work out, so long as there are people like you around working so hard for a better future. So you have been thinking of the future, even despite all of that. I... I am so sorry, I had no idea. Lysithia, I have offended you most persistently. Please, find it in your heart to forgive my impudence. Don't worry about it. If you're so insistent upon being my friend, I'm sure more tasty snacks and tea will help persuade me. But if speaking of the future holds such importance, better to find someone who actually has one. I understand. Yes, let's take tea together again soon. <laughs> Hello, Catherine. A moment of your time. Oh, it's you. Yes? That sword you wear upon your hip. How did you come by it, exactly? I don't appreciate your tone. Are you implying I swiped it off someone? Not at all. But heroes' relics are typically passed down through the bloodlines of the Ten Elites. You are descended from a noble family, are you not? That's none of your business. Actually... Let's say I was a nobody, with no relic, no crest. I would still be me, wouldn't I? That's not to say lineage counts for nothing. It just doesn't count as much as how you lived your life and what you live for. Or, let's say I was descended from some noble house. Would that change how you treat me? Yes, it would. To treat you differently from the common folk would only be appropriate. You're so narrow-minded, tied down by foolish, antiquated notions. But the nobility and the common folk are different. If the few did not have capabilities to set them apart from the many, then they would not be the few. Wow. You really think nobles are better than everyone else, don't you? I didn't mean to suggest... You pay so much attention to people's lineage and status that you have no idea who they actually are. Even if I was from the prestigious house whatever, I would never associate with a blowhard like you. Hey, Ignatz. What you doing? Cyril, hello. I was just looking outside. Are you off to work right now? I'm gonna get a bucket and get rid of that big puddle everybody keeps walking around. Oh, you're getting rid of the puddle over there? That's a shame. Huh? I've quite enjoyed looking at the puddle. But pay me no mind. The work needs doing. I know. I... Huh? What's so nice about it? Well, look at it. With the addition of the puddle, the whole landscape has changed dramatically. Plus, it's perfectly unique. No two puddles are alike. Light will never again hit the water in quite that way. This whole landscape is unique, in fact. 
here, now, for us to enjoy. It didn't exist a moment ago, and it won't exist in a moment. I guess you're right, huh? Weird. I never thought about the rain that way. How it makes the world look different, and how that's kind of special, I mean. Your mood just brightened, Cyril. And that made the world a little brighter, didn't it? And that's the other thing about looking at a landscape. The view is affected by the viewer's feelings. Huh. Maybe you're right. When I remember it, I think Almira was a real dull and lonely place. Once you're out of the city, there's nothing but the plains and sky, and they stretch on forever. You can lose yourself out there. That's the kind of place it is. It's strange. When I remember it now, even though it's lonely, it also seems real pretty, too. Maybe the image in your memories is affected by your emotional state. Anyway, it sounds fascinating. Endless plains, boundless sky. That's Almira, huh? The thought of it makes my pulse quicken. <laughs> You're a big weirdo, Ignatz. Am I? <laughs> I suppose I am. Sitting around, talking about how pretty puddles are? Well, when you put it like that. Still, I'd love to see Almira someday. Cyril, after the war, would you go there with me? We can make some memories of your homeland that aren't all dull and lonely. I don't know. Maybe. But, yeah, I'll think about it. Phew. That about wraps it up for today's training. No thanks to a certain distraction. Professor Hanneman, I know you're there. It's extremely unsettling the way you're always staring like that. Oh, my apologies, child. I was trying to remain inconspicuous, not wanting to interrupt. Your half-hearted attempt to hide your weird staring only makes it weirder. Well, I must apologize. In the future, I shall do my staring out in the open. That might ease the weirdness, but it will continue to be extremely unsettling. I have no desire to disturb nor to disquiet you. But you are a most exquisite subject for my crest research. And you understand that the foundation of all research is observation. I understand well enough, and I'll do my best to ignore it, but in return... In return, I will keep your secret. I have not spoken a word of your twin crests, not even to the church. If they knew I was withholding such valuable information, I might be branded a traitor. But such matters are trivial compared to the future of Crestology. Shh! Don't talk so loudly about it out here in the open! Pardon my excitement. I simply cannot let the opportunity to study such a miraculous subject go to waste. These awful crests may seem miraculous to you, but for me, they fall under the category of curse. I hope one day you will share more about your tragic origins whenever you have the time to recount it. Your tale may contain valuable information. You are utterly lacking in empathy, you know that? Even if you spent your entire life observing me, you'd never understand my feelings and all I've been through. Now, if you'll excuse me. Ah, uh, I fear I may have made a misstep. I have no desire to trouble her, yet my research... It was so sunny this morning, but now it's absolutely pouring. Did you hear the thunder just now? Good thing we got all the clothes indoors before the skies opened up. I apologize for troubling you with this task. Don't worry about it. I was just passing by and thought I could help. I know how frustrating it is to have your newly dried clothes soaked by rain. Oh. What's wrong? We managed to keep all of the clothes dry, didn't we? It's just... odd. Every time it's my turn to wash the clothing, there's a sudden downpour. Surely it must just be an inconvenient coincidence. But I can't help feeling as though I'm somehow to blame for it. 
Ah, I see. That probably is your fault. Wow, you're even harsher than I am. You have a crust of Karen, don't you? I do, yes, but... Hold on a moment. How did you know that? I can just tell. I have a crust of Karen, too. And I've noticed that, whenever I need dry weather, there's rain. Don't you think it's our crusts making the rain fall upon us? How had I never connected this? This is quite a revelation. A crest affecting the weather. <laughs> well, I don't know how true it is. There are only the two of us, which is a pretty small sample of people. I suppose that's true. So, we must test our hypothesis. Hmm. Maybe we can find someone who tends to bring the sunshine around. That would be especially handy for helping out with the wash. Now there's an idea. <sighs> hey, Cyril! Cyril? Hmm. What is he staring at? I see. Hey, what are you looking at there? Anything interesting? Let me have a look. Three apples, two bags of ointment, one piece of graphite. Intriguing. Some sort of code, perhaps? Nah, I was just asked to go out and buy the stuff on this list. Oh, that's all? Sorry for interrupting in that case. This is kind of a one-person job, so I won't bother you by offering aid. Mm. You actually helped a lot just now, reading that list for me like you did. I'd appreciate it if you wouldn't tell anybody, because I've been trying to keep it a secret, but... I don't know how to read, so I wasn't sure what to do with the list. Is that so? But why do you keep it a secret? I'd hate it if people figured I wasn't up to a job just because I couldn't read. You're always welcome to call on me for help. I'd be happy to. Thanks. I will. I really mean that. Anything you need. Okay. Good. Now, you'd better go get those supplies before it gets dark. Do you remember everything on the list? Need me to read it one more time for you? That would be pretty helpful, actually. All right, listen up. I'm not gonna do this a third time. Lysithia's not a good liar, is she? She knew I was in trouble right away. Hang on. Did she just want to act like a big sister again? But she looked real happy when she was helping me. And I think I'd like to see that smile again sometime. <laughs> Finished with your training, Miss Marianne? Oh, P Professor Hanneman. Yes, I've just finished training for the day. You have merely completed the exercises assigned to you, yes? Nothing more? Or am I wrong? Yes. I'm sorry. I should have done more. No, no, please. You've done as you were asked. Quite solid work, child. I simply wish to ask a question. You possess a crest, do you not? I... <sighs> when you entered the officer's academy, your father submitted a request to the monastery, as well as a significant donation. Your father asked that your crest not be confirmed under any circumstances. At first, I thought he did not want the world to know that his daughter bore no crest. In your father's position as a newly minted noble, it would be most advantageous for his daughter to possess a crest, you see. However, I am now certain I was wrong. I believe you do, in fact, possess a crest of some sort. How did you find out? I have been called the Father of Crestology, which is a bit of an ostentatious title, I admit. However, a brief period of observation allows me to hazard a usually accurate guess as to whether a body houses a crest or not. With the knowledge of your father's actions and my own observations, 
I come to you with a warning. As a crest bearer, you are guaranteed to have certain talents. It is prudent to study your crest diligently to ensure your safe mastery of these talents, whatever they may prove to be. No, no. I have no talents. Oh, yes. You do. No matter how hard you may try to hide it, my sight is keener than that. And what I see, others will eventually notice as well. Those who hold power must wield it in the service of their fellow man, Miss Marianne. I believe that is true, whether you are peasant or noble. And doubly true, I would say, for those with crests. Or do you think I'm wrong? I... <sighs> On principle alone, it is a waste to allow a rare talent to remain dormant. I would like very much to advise you to aid your understanding of your crest. Will you accept my offer? No, I refuse. That is regrettable. A veritable tragedy, Miss Mary. Cleaning again, I see. Hilda, you're in the way. Move it. I'm supposed to refill the horse's water troughs, but I can't find the buckets. I was told that they'd be in the usual place. What's the usual place? Maybe you'd know where that is if you did your job sometime. You know, Cyril, I don't want to interrupt you while you're cleaning, but... Come on, the buckets are over near the wall, where they always are, because I put them there. Okay. Thanks for your help. You're pretty strong. I bet you're tired, though. Come on, let's rest a bit. Okay, just for a minute, though. I got more work to do. <laughs> I'm not a fan of awkward silences. <laughs> Anything interesting happen lately? Figured you were the one with something to say. Quiet, don't bother me. I need an interesting topic for this letter I'm writing to my brother. I'm stumped. Your brother write to you a lot? Constantly, yeah. He must be bored. He's always going on about how worried he is for me. What's worse, if I take too long to reply, he gets more worried and writes more about it. Write about your life, maybe. You know, stuff like, I got real lazy again today. Or maybe, can you believe I still don't know where they put the water buckets? You're mean. Do you really think that little of me? You're a lazy gal who gets people to do her work for her. I never knew anybody like that in Almira. Oh, really? So Lady Rhea isn't the only difference between Fodlin and Almira after all? I don't like comparing Lady Rhea with you, but I figure you're right. But you know what's real weird? Nobody seems to mind picking up your slack. Even me. Sorry, what was that? Uh, nothing worth repeating. Anyway, I gotta get back to work. He's such a diligent boy. I don't think I've ever seen someone from Fodlin work that hard. Oh, hang on. I never got an idea from him about what to write in my letter. Ugh. I guess there's nothing for it. Maybe I can just write about Cyril. <laughs> That's enough. You're done for today. Right. Thanks. Are you feeling pain anywhere, Leone? No. Sorry. I'm all right. Why are you apologizing? Because I can't hold my own against you. And on top of that, you have to worry about hurting me. I feel like I've let you down. Do you know what I meant when I said, you're done for today? Probably that I was about to keel over. 
No, it wasn't about your physical strength. I could tell that you didn't have the will to keep fighting. I've got plenty of will. No matter what I do, I can't win. Isn't that what you were thinking? If you think you can't win, you won't. <laughs> Perhaps you already knew that. Good point. But never assume that you'll win. That is, don't underestimate your foe. At all times, you have to keep a clear head to make split-second decisions. In battle, mistakes are deadly. But I don't have a crest or a relic. How could I ever hope to beat you? If you put it like that, I'll fight barehanded, and I won't use my crest. Think you can win? Do your worst. Oh dear, I might have overdone it there. But I believe in her. I would be doing her a disservice if I pulled any punches. It's Leone after all. She'll be back on her feet and charging at me before I know it. Hey there, Flane. I thought I'd drop by and see if you'd care for a... Now just a moment, Sylvain. If you must speak with me, I implore you to do so from where you stand. My apologies if this comes across as rude, but please do not come any closer to me. Excuse me? I am sorry. My brother has explicitly warned me not to go near you. Seth said that? I bet he also told you any woman who comes too close to me is, how does he say it, doomed to misfortune? He used those very words. Is it true then? Come on. He's just messing with you, obviously. Of course I would prefer to believe that, but one can never know for certain. Particularly when similar stories are constantly in circulation about you. I have heard that men and women alike have been seduced by your nefarious ways. I hate to suggest my talents are being oversold, but... I have heard that you toy with people's emotions, like a cat toys with its prey. Do I really look like such a villain to you? Well, perhaps not. You do not strike me as much of a charmer. When you put it like that, I feel like I should defend... Yeah, forget it. Let's get to the actual point. Did I not tell you, Sylvain? Stay away from me. It's kind of awkward talking from so far away. Can I please step just a little? Truly, there are countless terrible stories of your behavior. I've heard that you panic when there aren't women around to flirt with, that you've gone as far as flirting with horses and even chickens. Oh, come on. Who would even... <laughs> you should know that your brother has an overactive imagination. I would like to believe that you are a sincere and reputable person, Sylvain. But there is no smoke without fire. Or so the saying goes. I may not be the most respectable fellow you'll ever meet, but... Until I can be certain, please refrain from coming too close to me. Now, if you will excuse me, I must be on my way. Flame, wait! Come back! And she's gone. All I was trying to do was deliver a message. Flame, hey! The professor said we need to come to the cathedral! I'll run really far ahead so you don't have to walk near me! There, I tried telling her. The professor can't be mad about that. Hey, Alois. Looks like you're done for the day. Care to join me in the dining hall? Ah, Catherine. How could I refuse? Nothing like a good drink. I feel better already. The grub's not bad either. This is the perfect way to end a long day of work. <laughs> I couldn't agree more. It feels like a weight's been lifted from my shoulders. It's at times like this, when worldly worries fall away, that I can really live in the moment. It's intoxicating. Worldly worries live in the moment? <laughs> Look who's suddenly waxing poetic. Oh, wait, you feel intoxicated before you've had a drop of booze? Talk about a lightweight. Hello! Just the man I was looking for. Ah, oh, yes. Were you the fellow selling ancient coins? <laughs> yes, sir. Since our meeting at the antique shop yesterday, I got my hands on something new. Here we are. Look at this magnificent coin. Do you see the engraving? It's the crest of House Karen, 
one of the kingdom's most prominent noble families. It's an exceptionally rare piece, commissioned by a hero a thousand years ago. By a hero? A thousand years ago? I'll take it! How much do I owe you? For a collector such as yourself, sir, I'm happy to offer it at a discounted price. Let's see, uh, that'll be... Hold on, stop trying to swindle my friend. You're claiming a hero from House Karen had their crest engraved on this coin. That's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Tell me, as a collector of antiques, are you familiar with this piece? It's a legendary sword. Ma'am, please, keep your nose out of my... What? Is that... Thunderbrand? That's not possible. It couldn't be. You are familiar with it. Excellent. Perhaps you know how cleanly it slices through liars and sheets. Ah! Ah, you're saying that whole story was a lie? I thought it was obvious. Mission accomplished. Let's pack up and get out of here. Uh, yes. Let's. <sighs> What's wrong? You don't seem like your usual self. Oh, I'm still the same old Aloise. Uh, come on, let's head back before nightfall. Don't try to hide it. You're making it obvious. Shamir, can I ask you a stupid question? That depends on how stupid it is. You're a skilled sniper. You've completed countless missions. And in the process, you've taken countless lives. Correct. And your point? After a mission, do you ever think about the people you killed? Never. I see. Well, I guess that's the best way, huh? There's no point dwelling on it. <sighs> After all the lives you've taken, why worry about it now? I've got everything packed up. I'm going to head back now. You should head home as well, before it gets too dark. <sighs> what a tiresome man. And he said, I don't even have a horse. <laughs> Pretty funny story, huh? <sighs> what is it, Shamir? You're not laughing. Didn't you think it was funny? Sure. So then laugh. You could stand to be a little friendlier, you know. Do I need to be? What do you mean, need to be? Friendship isn't about obligation. You could try being a bit warmer. Like when I first met you, I took the time to introduce myself and make friendly conversation, and you just said, hi, I'm Shamir. I remember thinking that you wouldn't be easy to get along with. Now that's funny. I remember thinking you were just another knight who loved the sound of her own voice. You know, the type who's all talk but useless in battle. Well, that's a bit harsh. Did you really think that? Yes. <laughs> but you changed your mind when you saw me in action. I did. You're surprisingly strong. Well, even though you had zero charm, you did a nice job of supporting me. Now I know that you'll always have my back. In fact, maybe I should take it easy and let you handle all the fighting. It sounds like I'm going to be doing a lot more work around here. <laughs> we make a pretty good team. At any rate, we're bound together, so we better try to get along. Don't you think, partner? If that's how you see it, I can't disagree. Alright, that was quite a lot of support that we did, but we are still going to do the, uh, the mission in this episode, because I do want to get some action in this episode. So, Conflict in the Holy Tomb. 
Oh my gosh, I suggested level 21, we're level 30. 40, dang. Your house ventures into the holy tomb to receive a revelation from the goddess. In, the, in that hidden place deep beneath Garrick Mach, a shocking truth is revealed. Oh, let's do it, y'all. I know that was a long, 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 long support session, but had to get them just so we could get the future supports in the time skip, after the time skip. Conflict in the Holy Tomb, White Clouds, Chapter 11, Throne of Knowledge. You're going to receive the goddess's revelation at the Holy Tomb? That's news to me. I did not see that coming. Lady Rhea's going too, right? I hear it will be well guarded, but is that so? This would be okay? pretty quick. F F one, two, slap, slap, around. you're done. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> certainly true that they don't know when or where they may appear. I don't know what type of place this holy tomb is, but we should be cautious. If something happens, we'll have to take matters into our own hands. What do you think, Professor? Is it really okay for Lady Rhea to attend? Mm, it's encouraging. Leave it to our fearless leader to shrewdly factor in Rhea's fighting ability. You're bold, Teach. I love it. Well, the truth is, we won't know what's going to happen until it happens. All we can do is stay on our guard and play it by ear. That's quite enough babbling, Claude. There is nobody more unfit for a holy ceremony than you. Um, divine punishment won't strike us for sitting foot in the holy tomb, right? Good grief. Why are you always so negative? Hmm? Flame? Is something on your mind? Who? Me? No. It is nothing. May we all see this through to the end. It still doesn't make sense to me. A goddess was living inside Teach, right? But now there's a ceremony to receive a revelation or whatever. How could that be necessary anymore? There must be another objective. <sighs> it's pointless to speculate about it now. We'll know the answer soon enough. There isn't any danger for us students, but be careful, Teach. All right. Are you surprised, Professor? This is the Holy Tomb. That mechanism for descending underground back there, what power is it? When I tried to come by myself, it wouldn't even budge. This is where the goddess who created this world was laid to rest, along with her children. It is said that our creator, hey, we know the what that Sophus, is. sat upon this very throne. Professor, do you recognize this throne? I do. So long. I have waited so very long for this day. Sit upon the throne. I have no doubt you will be gifted a revelation from the goddess. Well? It was supposed to be but a step away. What could possibly be missing? Sorry to disturb you when you're distressed, Archbishop, but it seems some uninvited guests have arrived. <laughs> Don't move, any of you. If you move, your lives will be forfeit. Thank you ever so much for guiding us this far. The Imperial Army will now take possession of everything in the Holy Tomb. <laughs> the Imperial Army? What are they doing here? So, they knew we were heading to the Holy Tomb and followed us here. Hey, who is that standing next to the angry guy? Could that be... The Flame Emperor. I see. So you've been allied with the Empire from the beginning. What are they doing here? What do they hope to gain? There's only one goal for grave robbers like these. Right, Flame Emperor? You're here to steal the treasure that rests within the Holy Tomb. For a fool, you catch on quickly. Those Crescent Stones will be ours. That infernal power, which is masquerading as a medicine, but is truly a poison, will plague this world no longer. Insolence! You will atone for the sin of trampling on this holy resting place. Professor, destroy these villainous traitors who dare dishonor our creator!
All right. I am grateful. There's something in my throat, but I don't know what it is. <clears throat> I need to drink something hot to like melt whatever it is, cause like, ugh. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So who are we gonna take? Take. Let's take Marianne. Take an Ignat. We wanna take Hilda too. Um, we can. I want to bring Hilda, so let's go ahead and. I guess let's take let's take out. We can take out Raphael for the time being. We'll be okay with without Raffi, I think. Um, as you taunt wise. We'll bring five to time. We'll bring Raffi for the extra defense. Um, as you can see, he is a sniper now. I'm pretty sure I did that in the last episode as well. Yeah, this should be this should be good. I will not allow such violence from the Empire. Strike down the rebels and protect the holy tomb. Okay. The crest stones are in the caskets. Open every last one of them. The holy tomb must not be desecrated. Protect as many of the crest stones as you can. To protect the crest stones if they're stolen, you can get them back by taking the foes that have them. Okay. I guess we're fighting over who gets those crest stones. What in the world do they intend to use them for anyway? Okay. I, stand I can ready. just go ahead and throw, throw everybody off on their own because they can handle it. Bow Knight Lorenz here. You can't compete with me. I'm nice. We got rest of gauntlets. Ready and willing. Dang, dude. It's not luck, it's fate. He, he almost has sniper master, master, so that's good. Leave Hilda there. Let's get to it. Just have Leone go off on her own. Really a 20 percent chance hit? Later. Kind of sad, but okay. Ready anytime. Who me? Okay. Who me? Frey cool. Oh my goodness. Get the mace. Sorry, did I hurt you? Okay. She only did very little damage. Stay focused. I'm gonna move forward with you. Leave it to me. Like I said, we can, I, think, I feel like we can get through this pretty quickly. I'm just gonna use stride on. I'm just gonna use stride on you real quick, just so you can go attack that dude. I know it's a waste, but that. it's fine. I just want him to be able to attack this guy. Actually, I'll attack, I'll attack this guy from a distance rather right? than. I'm so sorry. Huh? It worked out. There we go. I 
back, use my distance. Get that crest stone back. A trivial victory. Move the up one. Damage, oh my gosh. I just worked harder. I'm gonna go ahead and attack you with some magic. What's next? Here we got a little love for Shamir. I'll grow as strong as I can. We can't reach. Oh, there we go. I'll show you. Nice, Ignat. Who knew? Okay. She's very cool here. Apocalyptic, apocalyptic flame. That's cool. Choice moving closer like that. You underestimated me. Don't hold this against me, okay? Never underestimate an outsider. Nice dodge. 
Lawrence is much better than how he was before with my beginning. My efforts have borne fruit. to grow. Guys, okay, that's fine. We have Ignatio, Marianne's on the way as well. You attack her if you, if you know you're gonna do no damage. Here comes this guy, which I'm pretty sure we can handle on our, all on our own. Told it's fine to kill those who resist. Now then, how shall I cook you? You won't. Wait. No. I was just following orders. I just... Well, that sucks, man. Okay. I'm gonna drop too. Get the healing back. If huh? It worked out. There we go. Did I hurt you? Don't expect much more than that. Alright. Could silence, they don't really need to, so. Moving forward. Nice dodge. That takes care of that. These guys are catching up slowly but surely. You're not gonna attack, so. Victory. All right. <laughs> I could attack attack the dude from here. I'm so sorry. I actually won. Amazing. All right. Awesome. Make 
this guy not do anything, he's gonna be sitting there like he's gonna be a sitting duck. So just move this guy. You know, I forget that Leon is, Leon is a sword master. So you're the fabled flame emperor? Go ahead and enlighten me. What are you planning to do with the crest stones? What did you use flame's blood for? Who's Kranya? Who's Solon? Silence. There is no need for you to know. Is it that mask that's to blame for your curtness? If so, maybe I should rip it off and ask again. Yeah. Oh. We got got his thing back now. I've reached the pinnacle. All right, now let's just finish this off. Sublime so heaven. Just you cause. The one person I did not wish to make an enemy of. No hesitation. Oh. The end has come. Is this some sick joke? The Flame Emperor is actually Edelgard? You protected all the crest stones. Rest of the bow. Knowledge gem. What's that? Is that an... Oh. Squilix. Skills. Advanced seal. Cuckoo. Seven turns. Conflict in the Holy Tomb. Let's go. Save. My thank you so much. You have disappointed me, Edelgard. To think that a descendant of House Heresbelg would dare betray the Holy Church. Professor, kill Edelgard at once. She is a danger to all of Fodlin. Such a rebellious heart cannot be allowed to keep beating. I have achieved my objective. I will retreat. Farewell, Professor. If we meet again, it will be on the battlefield. Come, Hubert. To flee is futile, wicked girl. The Church of Seros will raise its entire army against you until you have been captured and punished. You have defiled the holy tomb, dishonored the goddess, and humiliated your brethren. That crime will never be erased. Even if you burn in the eternal flames and spill all of your blood into the goddess's soil. Come, Professor. Let us return and decide upon our next course of action. I'm not exactly on friendly terms with the princess, but I do have a few questions for her. Edelgard said that the crest stones represent power. That means she knows how to use them. She almost certainly knows other secrets of Fodlin as well. Once things calm down a bit, there's a lot more that Rhea needs to tell us. I just hope there's still time. I have this strange feeling that history is being written, that an age of anarchy is upon us. Let's hope I'm mistaken. The leaders of the church have misused its creed to fulfill their true desire, to rule the world. They have fooled the people of Fodlin. 
Long ago, they divided the empire to create a kingdom, and then divided that kingdom to create an alliance. They did all of this to make the masses bicker amongst themselves. They caused instability in order to reinforce their own authority. They gathered gold and lived in extravagance. How? By preying on the devotion of those who wished for the goddess's salvation. Those corrupt hypocrites cannot lead Bodlin to true peace. Their foul belief system must be torn asunder so that true wisdom may finally prevail. And so, I have decided. By order of the Adrestian Emperor, Edelgard von Hressfeld, the Empire hereby declares war on the Church of Seros. I cannot believe it. Let us recount the situation as it stands, Professor. After you returned from the Holy Tomb, the Adrestian Empire declared war upon the Church of Seros, as well as our allies. Edelgard demanded her own father relinquish the throne, and then assumed the position of Emperor. She has deemed the Church of Seros to be an evil of this world, and is calling upon the people of Fodlin to help her tear it down. I must discuss our response to this declaration with the Archbishop, after the Knights return from their investigation. Until then, watch over the students. See that they remain calm. I heard what happened, Teach. The Princess, well, the Emperor now. She really did it, didn't she? The Lords and Dukes of both the Kingdom and the Alliance have been called out, and now have to choose between the Church and the Empire. The seed of conflict was always there. And now, we find ourselves in the middle of a war that will tear Fodlin in two. The Empire is rash, but I never thought it would come to this. How could something like this happen? I hope everyone back home is safe. I'm sure it's mass confusion at home right now. My brother must be worried sick about me. You're absolutely right, Teach. I'm sure a lot of us are worried about our homes, but... All we can do for now is prepare for battle, and tread carefully. Part 1. White Clouds. Lone Moon. To War. Together, the people of Fodlin relish the beauty of the brilliant moon overhead as another year ends. They recall sad partings and new acquaintances alike, but each person must still walk their chosen path alone. With each day, the presence of spring grows stronger, and yet a lone moon still haunts the sky, a silent reminder, perhaps, of some inescapable truth. Okay. Unforgivable! I cannot fathom that the Adrestian Empire would embark on such a violent course of action. The fault is my own. I failed to see the wickedness within Edelgard's heart. What's her objective? There is no question on that front. She clearly wishes to conquer all of Fodlin. And in order to achieve her own selfish ambitions, she plotted with ill-meaning strangers and defiled the Holy Tomb. Or perhaps her ambitions are even grander than we know. Perhaps she is planning to make herself a false deity by demonizing the Church of Seros. Adrestia received its very name through a divine oracle. To injure the goddess is a sin most foul that shall not be forgiven, nor forgotten. We must stop the Empire, and quickly. I have returned, Rhea. Welcome back, Shamir. 
Were you able to discern the Empire's movements? Their main troops are marching towards Garrick Mach. It is said that they will join forces with Edelgard's army and arrive within two weeks. Two weeks? That is not enough time. It will require all of our efforts just to prepare our defenses before then. We must send notice to all surrounding villages at once. We must order the residents of Garrick Mach to flee for their lives. It will be done. Professor, listen closely. If our enemy invades the monastery, I will have no choice but to stand upon the battlefield. If something happens to me, I am entrusting my sacred duties to you. You must have guessed it by now. The truth of who you are. Or perhaps I should say, your lost memories are surely beginning to return. I have acted all these long years as a mere proxy for you. But the duty is yours, and yours alone. Only you can lead the people of <coughs> Fulham. Rhea, please. You must tell me all that you know, I beg of you. <sighs> that one is the progenitor god. Am I correct? In a sense. Our dear professor is a vessel, one who carries the power of the progenitor god within. In time, the vessel will become one with the power contained within, and the progenitor god shall return to this world. I see. I trust that you are aware of the questionable nature of this experiment. But I suppose there is no turning back. I ask that you help our friend, and in doing so, help her. I am waiting and hoping for the moment when our Creator rules this wayward land once more. I understand. As ever, I will take you at your word. Lady Rhea! Brother, I will do my part as well. Flame, were you eavesdropping? <sighs> Regardless, I am glad to hear it. You owe your life to the Professor, after all. And in the end, they may prove to be our brethren. You have my gratitude, Sedith. And you as well, Flane. As followers of the Progenitor God, it is up to us to see our mission through. Okay, so there's not really much to do, I don't think. Um, so, we're gonna go ahead and end out the episode here. We're just gonna continue onwards. We're probably just gonna do one battle uh, to get that last quest out of the way. Uh, just, oh, actually, it's, it's already too late. <clears throat> Never mind. We probably won't do any of this, and then we'll probably just do seminar and just like explore. That's probably what we'll do, and then we'll go ahead and go into the next mission. Because I believe this next after this chapter is gonna be the time skip. So. Before that, I do want to. No, uh, no, you don't. You're not gonna get if I do that. Cause I want to. No, cause I want to. What is it? Should I make into a hero? Seventy-nine percent passing. What is it? I'll give him sword fair advantage. And I don't really think we need that. I think he's good. He has sniper. He's he mastered sniper now. So, um, assassin, sword fair, lock touch, <clears throat> stealth. Um, yeah, we could do that, but I don't think we are. I think we only have one advanced seal. Um, who is it that wants to use the advanced six seal? I'll probably another. Uh, definitely for, for you, but. Your brawling needs to be high. <clears throat> probably try. I'll try. I'll try. Probably try for air, for Axe Fair. Scythia. She can become a Grimori with no with no problem. Just need to get a Master Seal, but 
Marianne, good. Hilda. Really a 30% chance? Huh. Kinda sucks. But anyways, yeah, we'll do that. We'll do the, I'll probably do this off screen to figure it out then. Um, but yeah, so thank you all so much for watching this episode of Fire Emblem 3 Houses. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit that like button. Comment down below and don't forget to subscribe. Become a royalty today. We'd love to have you in our community. So thank you all so very much for watching and I'll see you all in the next episode.